The Chiropractic Philanthropist, Episode 240. We were given money ahead of time for a product that I and my team and I envisioned, and then we made it happen. And it actually, we invested a lot more into it and we made it better than they were expecting. Starting your own practice is hard for many chiropractors. It's riddled with both struggles and successes. But here at the Chiropractic Philanthropist, we make it easy by having chiropreneurs and entrepreneurs share their struggles and lessons learned in life and business so that you don't have to make the same mistakes. And now here's your host, Dr. Ed Osborne. My guest today on the Chiropractic Philanthropist is Dr. Kevin Christie. He is a sports chiropractor in South Florida area and also the CEO of HealthFit Corporate Wellness which provides an on-site chiropractic and digital platform ergonomics for large corporations. He has combined his passion of sports and the health of the desk worker into a podcast called The Modern Desk Jockey. All right, let's thank today's sponsor, and that is ChiroClicker. It's the world's first chiropractic adjusting toy for kids. It allows children to play chiropractors at home, pretending to adjust their family and all their teddies and dolls. Chiropractors can buy the Cairo Clicker in bulk and sell them in their office or just give them away to their practice members. TCP listeners get a 10% discount by using the code TCP10. That's TCP10. Head over to ChiroClicker.com and use your code TCP10 and order your Cairo Clicker today. Dr. Kevin, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. I really appreciate it. Enjoying it. Yeah. So, you know, one thing we'd love to do to start the TCB podcast episodes is really just to to ask you, you know, tell us a little bit about who you are, you know, as a person, because I want to learn a little bit more about you as a person, but also you as a chiropractor and not just a chiropractor, but my gosh, I mean, even the pre-chat and you and I've been talking for about the last half hour. I mean, I'm learning more and more about your business. I mean, you're truly an entrepreneur. So I would love to learn a little bit more about you. Absolutely. Uh, I live down in Delray Beach, Florida, which is a little kind of beach village down in South Florida. It's a growing area. You get to walk everywhere. Kind of like a nice walking community. I'm actually from South Florida originally, which not a lot of us uh, down here uh, grew up very active into sports and then uh, was lucky enough to go to Florida State University for school and just really dove into the athletics of things. When I was there, I uh, worked with the athletic teams in more of a strength and conditioning capacity and learned a lot about athletics and competitive athletics from there. So once I went to uh, Logan College of Chiropractic in St. Louis, I knew I wanted to be a, a quote unquote sports chiropractor. So I uh, learned as much as I could, did that, graduated, and then uh, came back down to South Florida and was really fortunate enough about 10 years ago when I graduated to come down here and lined up a really nice uh, job. So I started my chiropractic career at that point, and that's um, where I I really ran the gamut of, uh, you know, you get all these chiropractors that's like, should I become an associate? Should I open my own business? What should I do? You know, I started... As an associate, learned a lot from a great chiropractor named Andrew Wasserman down in Coral Springs, Florida. Did that for about a year and a half. Then I had an opportunity to go into a partnership. Uh, so I did that for a few years, and that really springboarded me into opening up my my own practice in uh, Boca Raton, Florida, six years ago. So uh, that's kind of my story as far as getting started. And then about five years ago, really tied in my practice into the corporate setting I had a patient that just came to me. They were opening up this really elaborate, uh, it was ADT security in a new headquarters where they had this main street. Cause you can kind of picture it where you're walking in and it's this cobblestone main street in the middle of a building that's lined with stores and it's got palm trees in there because it's got this glass roof. And so it's real South Florida main street feel. Uh, you got a Starbucks on one side, you've got uh, gym on the other, and then you have your chiropractic office, and and we were lucky enough to be chosen as the the chiropractor to to run a business inside there. And there's everything from, from massage therapy to uh, acupuncture. There's a nurse practitioner in there, so it's really a one stop shop for health. And uh, we've been there for for five years and just kind of scaled it to other locations. And so now, in the six years of of being a a chiropractic 
business owner, uh, I've got a couple locations, Boca Raton, Miami, and we do a lot of sports chiropractic, a lot of sports medicine. And then we've been able to really tie that in nicely to uh, four different corporate locations in South Florida where we do on-site care. And it kind of feeds itself. So it's just a really nice uh, mini conglomerate of, of chiropractic that we have going on down here. And that's helped uh, grow our business uh, exponentially. You know, I, I, I love this story, by the way. This is incredible. Like to to build a practice that is so successful and there must have been that, that that pull to want to just coast to take it easy and just have that great practice and just maintain what you have but you you just seem to keep being you know just growing and expanding your business into other you know different areas even online business and things like that what is it that keeps you so motivated I've always been very competitive. I don't know if it stems from being an athlete or, or, or just in general in my DNA to be competitive. Uh, but the combination of my competitive nature and then just, uh, just a hunger for learning and ambition. It's just something that I've, I, I don't want to stop. It's almost like a, a game. It's not even a dollars and cents type game. It's just more of, uh, I enjoy it. It's, I'm, I'm truly passionate about what I do. And so for me, it's, uh, it's fun building, uh, a team of people that work with me. You know, I try not to call them employees. I try to call them team members and everybody's in it together and, and to benefit. And so it's just, uh, it's fun to do that because ultimately what's great about our business, as you know, is as a chiropractor, the more successful you are, it means you're helping more people out. And, and that was what intrigued me so much about growing the corporate niches because these are a lot of people that need us uh, badly, whether it's preventative or uh, reactive uh, in a sense, because they're just, you know, they're dealing with a lot of um, health issues, these, these desk workers, even the ones, even individuals that are active, you know, like they, they may be active throughout the week, but they're still sitting 40 to 70 hours a week. And it's really hard to combat that. And so I would, if I had to be honest with you, I really found a ton of passion with the sports stuff. And then I found a whole new passion with the, the corporate side of things. And so it just keeps me going to, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, I got to tell you, I mean, uh, since I've started this laptop lifestyle of my own, and I think you might even be able to hear my kids in the background here. I work from home, but I mean, I'm at my desk, you yeah. know, and it, uh, literally I, I sent an email to um, a message to a chiropractor that was local and just said, look, this laptop lifestyle, this sitting, you know, for hours is just really kind of starting to really affect my spine, my nerve system and in my posture. So, I mean, I, I love And we're going to touch on this in just a few moments about, uh, the ergonomics aspect and what you're creating with uh, your podcast. But before we do, you know, do you have a tr- uh, like positive uh, words of, of affirmation, a quote that you would like to drop on doctors today? Yeah, I do actually. You know, I, I was given this by my office manager about a year ago and uh, I'm always looking to get better. Like I'm, I'm always doing things like, you know, going to different seminars and just trying to get better, not only in business, but in personal. And so when she gave this to me, she knew it would resonate with me because last year was a tough year uh, in a few different ways. But it, the the saying is tonight to go to sleep as though your whole body has been dropped and your whole past has been dropped, die to the past. And in the morning, wake up as a new man in a new morning. Don't let the same one go to bed that got up. Let him go to sleep for good. Let the one who is ever new and ever fresh awake instead. So I put this right on my nightstand at night and it just gives me a little reminder that, you know, learn from the past, stay in the present, but just know that you got to get better uh, every day. Well, I mean, speaking to you, it almost, and I'm sure that with the listeners too, you know, the, the chiropractors that are listening right now, it can almost sound like, you know what, this guy, he's got a charmed charmed practice in life but we know that's not true we all have struggles we all you know have our have our times where we we have to eat struggle for lunch as chiropractors was there ever a time that you had uh, fallen on your face and and struggled and what you learned from that experience doc yeah you know it's funny how life can be I, i've definitely uh, had a very good childhood very good college good everything was good uh business has been good you know business is always up and down uh but i would say 2015 definitely uh was an eye opener both professionally and personally uh from a professional standpoint uh, we had a corporate location that was generating 8000 a month in profit that um 
that we lost. The CEO had to retire. He retired and they brought a new CEO. They loved all the programs, but they just cut it out. And so that was, that was tough. In the same month, Blue Cross of Florida uh, cut our rates. They got taken over by that American specialty health. And so that was like a 40% cut. So I think that was like 6,000 a month in revenue that we lost. And then on top of that, I had to unfortunately let go of one of my doctors for something that was not expected. And he was a revenue center. So those three things really <laughs> put a damper on the the collections each month. And then around the same time, from a personal standpoint, unfortunately, I was going through a divorce. So, uh, you know, it was coming from all ends in 2015. I, I, you know, I definitely had a lot of friends and, and team members to rely on uh, to get through it. And the thing was, was that all that was going down between April and August, I'd say by December, Things were back to where they needed to be. We just, we really persevered and I, uh, took a lot of, um, uh, help from, from friends and obviously from my team members, my doctors, my, my staff in our two offices and they really didn't let me down. I, I couldn't have done it without them, to be honest with you. So that support system, you know, to both in your, I'm, I'm sure your personal life, but also yep. in your business is so important. I had to get you through. Yeah, it was, it was instrumental. Like you can't go unsaid, you know, it definitely was huge. And so in 2016 has been a really good year for us, uh, from a business standpoint. And then my personal life, I've got this just new, uh, kind of found desire to, to have fun, travel. I, I do get to travel quite a bit, which is, which is fun. And so it's just been a good, uh, a good year this year. So I think it was one of those ones where you learn from it. Uh, sometimes you need to go through hard things to really get the gratitude that you should have in life. And I think maybe I took life for granted prior to this past year in 2015. I think, I think it's very easy, you know, especially for Kairos, a lot of Kairos hang out on Facebook and things like that. And there's this veneer, we always show our good side, but you know, we all have our struggles and our challenges and I, and I love to bring that out in the conversation, but let's yeah. switch gears. You know, what is it truly amazing right now that you're doing that you're just so proud of? You know, I was really proud of, and again, you know, we had mentioned in the pre-chat about Dan Sullivan, a strategic coach, and he had a saying that sometimes you need to make it up and then make it real. And I did that back in December when I had a company, uh, World Fuel Services, come to us and their their biggest struggle, because they've got, they've got 6,000 employees spread throughout the world, and their ergonomics programs have always been more... Uh, it's just hard to really replicate, hard to scale. It's just been cumbersome and expensive. And so they, they came to us because I had a, um, a connection there where we did some education for them because they're based out of Miami. And she's like, could you put together a, a digital based ergonomics platform? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, we'd even give you the money up front because we needed to, they needed to like, kind of get their year end squared away with their wellness dollars. And I, and so I sat down with my team. Uh, of doctors and say, well, what can we put together that's worth this? And we did it. We, we, sub, we basically submitted them in January and they gave us, uh, basically until November this year to complete it. And we're actually already finished with it. So it was, uh, one of those ones where we were given money ahead of time for a product that I and my team and I envisioned. And then we made it happen. And, and it actually, we invested, a lot more into it and we made it better than they were expecting. And so it was very excited. And I was really happy with my overall team as well. Well, tell us a little bit about the modern desk jockey uh, podcast as well, because this is also something that's linked into what you're doing with ergonomics. Correct. So our, our real theme is, is we're trying to demonetize and digitize ergonomics, whether that's for the corporation or for the, the, like you, the person that's, that works uh, solo or just in general, they hear about us. We can't completely demonetize it for the corporation, but we can for, in a lot of ways, for just the regular desk worker. And that's where I came out with the podcast. It's like, look, this will be a bunch of free information. We're going to have great guests on there. We're going to have topic based where it's going to be healthy solutions that are easy to implement for the desk worker that doesn't in, you know, entail them having to buy this expensive chair, or this expensive desk. Yes, it's nice to have good things. You can't have a 20 year old chair, but there should be ways of preventing the illnesses that desk workers are suffering from without having to break the bank on it. And so I wanted to figure out a way, how can I kind of give to that desk worker community uh, information without having to, you know, charge and things of that nature. So that's where the podcast came about. And it's been a really good, you know, start. We launched it early August and I think we're launching episode six tomorrow. 
Uh, and it's just been, a, a, it's been fun too. That's, that's been really great about it. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask you actually to even just drop the URL so docs can actually check yeah. out the podcast. Um, I want them, uh, listeners, I want you to go check this out, not just because I think it's just incredible what you've created, but um, I think it's, in, it's just an incredible idea, but I'm also showing it, it's inspirational to see what you've actually done here. You've taken something and, and you've actually executed and created a program for people. Yeah, if you go to www.moderndeskjockey.com, that'll take you right to kind of where our podcast page is. But that podcast page is just one tab on our overall uh, corporate wellness site. So you can see how a lot of chiropractors want to get into the the corporate wellness space. And you can see how we did that in our e-learning center. You can kind of take a tour of that. And so you'll get an idea from there. And then, you know, maybe your uh, your patients will enjoy the podcast as well because it's my, my goal uh, is to educate them. And then once they get educated, they're going to hopefully seek out the types of providers that we are that's going to give them natural solutions uh, to their to their health issues. I got to tell you, I have all sorts of noise going on in the background today. <laughs> I'm, I, I got to apologize right away. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> so, you know, one thing that I find it really, again, that's really inspiring about what you're doing is that you're not confined by your four walls. I want to transition into Back to the Future. So I don't know if you know this, Doc, but we actually have a a time machine here at TCP. So we're going to send you actually back to a younger version of yourself. And this is right when you came out of chiropractic college and you have all the current knowledge and life experience that you have today. So what would you say to that younger self? What advice would you give? I would teach him the four freedoms that I've learned. And that is the four freedoms of time, money, relationship and purpose and just let them know like, look, relationship is a big deal. You know, not everything has to be work related. Not everything has to feed your ambition. You know, you can have balance in that, you know, like I've always strived to be successful. Um, but in many ways I failed, uh, in a personal life, uh, aspect to really just have that well-rounded, um, life in a sense. So I've, and that's my biggest focus right now is focusing on relationship. It, right now it's with family. Got my parents. They live right near me, which is great. Tons of friends, great patient base. So I'm really working on the relationship side of things because I, I've got a good relationship with money. Not that you have to have a million dollars to to have uh, freedom of money. But if you have a good relationship with money, that's great. Uh, and then I've got tons of purpose and I've actually got a fair amount of free time even though I've got a lot going on, I do a good job with that. So that was what I would really sit down with my younger self and explain as soon as I can. (laughs) Brilliant. And, you know, I'm interested to know, like, I mean, you're a podcaster now. You're also someone who's a creator of online business. You have successful practices. Um, What is it that you're listening to? What is What is an invaluable resource that you would like to share with, with entrepreneurs or chiropractors today? Absolutely. I'm a real big consumer of, of audio. I do read books as well, but I'm a huge consumer of audio because I walk the talk a lot. I drive a lot and I, I exercise. So I usually do it then. And, uh, to be honest with you, I'm big into podcasts and audible books. One audible book that you have to listen to is The Obstacle is the Way. Um, by Ryan Holiday. I, it's just an amazing book. And a lot of NFL teams are making their players read it as well. So if you ever feel like things are tough and hard, this book will really help you with that. And I actually learned that from a uh, podcast that I listen to pretty regularly, which is the Tim Ferriss Show. I think he, he gets plenty of uh, listeners and it's just been a really good one for me. Uh, I'm actually really enjoying your life, life t- uh, laptop lifestyle podcast. I've listened to all, I think six or seven of them has been out. And that's been a fun ad to it. So I appreciate that. And uh, that would be the best resources I could give folks right now, to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm I'm a total consumer of of audio as well. I had a, a yeah. someone I was speaking to today, and he said, "What books do you read?" And I said, "Well, right now I just listen to books, or I just yeah. everything is all about audio for me." And I think that's actually, you know, again, if if docs want to take something just from even that resource that you're providing, is if you want to be in that space, you're way ahead of the curve. Yeah. Um, so, listeners, you can actually head over to thechiropracticphilanthropist.com. We're going to have a web page dedicated to our discussion with Dr. Kevin Christie today as well. It's all the clickable links, so you can check out um, the Modern Desk Jockey. I'm going to encourage you to head over there and do that. If you're actually on your mobile, go ahead and open up, uh, expand those show notes. So the clickable links are right there, and you can check it out. Dr. Christie, incredible 
incredible information that you've uh, shared with us. And I, I'm truly inspired, you know, as, as a lot of chiropractors, and I speak to a lot of chiropractors these days, mm-hmm. are looking at scaling and, and shrinking and um, getting, you know, more refined and smaller, you just can continually seem to be expanding. And it is, it's pretty inspirational to talk to you because I don't get to talk to a lot of people who are doing that these days. So uh, I just want to acknowledge you for that. I appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity. And uh, and if everybody needs to contact me, I'm pretty active on social media, especially Facebook. You definitely can touch base with me on that. Fantastic. So I'll make sure, again, all those clickable links are there. And I want to thank you again uh, for bringing your practice and life experience to us today. So you've heard the struggles, you've heard the successes, and this episode is done. But there's still so much more to come and so much more to learn. Head on over to thechiropracticphilanthropist.com and sign up for our newsletter where you'll receive free practice building tips and strategies, including how to market your practice with your very own podcast and so much more. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on The Chiropractic Philanthropist.